Real Talk Day again, and today's topic is allies. Before I get rolling, I should make my position on allies and ally culture very clear, and that position is universally hostile. Allies are people who, while not part of marginalized groups, take sides with marginalized groups on issues of social justice. The rhetoric of allies is very tempting. You know, you support marriage equality, change your Facebook status or, or your picture, and show your support. But more often than not, identifying as an ally and showing support doesn't really show a lot of support at all. Changing your picture doesn't change the world. There's a transcript of a talk by Dr. Rachel McKinnon down below and identifies some of the key problems with ally culture. When we identify as allies, it often closes us to criticism from the very groups that we claim to support. Instead, we get into things like tone policing. We wonder why these groups aren't more inclusive to allies when what they're trying to do in their struggle is win rights. And the answer is because if we are their allies, we should support them regardless. If you can be talked out or mean talked out of supporting someone's rights, you were never their ally in the first place. Allies also assume a lot of the accolades without any of the risk. We're in that struggle for as long as we want to be, and we can leave at any time. There's a lot of ally language and literature that makes that clear. You know, winning allies is important, although we never quite say why, because it isn't clear what allies do. And before you say that allies vote, consider that showing up once every four years isn't really an act of alliance in so much as showing up literally every day. Allies also think it prudent to offer advice or on how best to participate in the struggle, you know, to people who are actually living it, whether that's uh, advising indigenous groups on how to win back their uh, rights or just advising women on how to deal with online harassment. Of course, uh, having been neck deep in this for 20 whole minutes, we're obviously super experts, um, certainly more than people who have lived it with it for their entire lives. There's another pamphlet down below called Accomplices Not Allies, and it's a little wonky to read because it's designed to be a fold-out book, but I definitely recommend it. And it asks a single question really, really poignantly. If, to support the group or groups to which you are allied, you had to commit a crime, would you? And yeah, maybe it depends on what the crime is, etc., etc., but the fundamental question is, if you had to actually take real risks would you because if the answer is yes that's when you start becoming an accomplice rather than an ally my answer by the way um i talk a really good game but my answer is i don't know i don't know that i have the particular kind of courage that that takes but it did cause me to ask that question and it really picked out some of the ways that I am bad at supporting marginalized groups. Both some of the ways that I used to be and some of the ways that I continue to be bad at it now. If you want to support people's struggle, I recommend you do it not by telling everyone you're a supporter, but by actually putting your ass on the line.